What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be talking about the differences between road runners and trail runners. And there are a couple of differences, but to get things started, why don't you write in the comments who you think is better, road runners or trail runners? Let's get into it. I came across an article in Outside Online titled, These are the key differences between road runners and trail runners. The article was written by Alex Hutchinson and I will provide a link in the show notes below. Oh, and this article was also based off of a study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research and I will also provide a link to that below. So what do you guys think about the key differences between road running and trail running? Do you think that just because you are a great athlete at road running that you are going to be just as good at trail running? Or do you think that they are just two completely different sports and because they're so different, they require different characteristics from the runner. Well, that's exactly what a group of researchers at the University of Lyon wanted to find out. And instead of having the athletes come to the lab, the researchers brought the lab to the athletes. And they didn't just go around and bring it to individual athletes. They went to the national team training camps for the French Athletic Federation's road and trail running teams. Now, the experiment wasn't the most sound experiment in the history of running experimentation. We only used seven road running athletes and 10 trail running athletes, and all of them were men. Also, the road runners in the study were all national class, whereas the trail runners in the study were all world class. The road runners had an average 10k best of 29 minutes and 17 seconds and the trail runners had just won the team title in the 2019 world trail championships and they placed fourth in the 2019 world mountain running championships also the trail runners tend to run for a longer amount of time up to 14 hours whereas the road runners kind of max out at the marathon distance so you might intuitively think that trail runners are probably stronger than road runners just because of all the climbing that they have to do in the mountains but when the researchers test quadricep and hamstring strength they found no difference between the two groups However, strength isn't the same as power, and when the researchers put the participants on a bike and they did an 8 second all out sprint, it was found that the trail runners could generate 23% more torque and 16% more power than the road runners. Okay, so that on its own is not surprising. I would generally think that trail runners can generate a little more power than road runners simply because of, as I previously stated, they are bounding up mountains a lot of the time. But what about running economy? Running economy is a huge metric to measure when we're considering how successful a runner is going to be. A more economic runner uses less power and thus can either run further or run harder. But this is where we run into some considerable differences between road running and trail running. Road runners, they are rewarded for running in exactly the same way for long periods of time. Road runners are going to set themselves like a metronome and then just run, churning out the miles. Trail runners, on the other hand, are going to be going up and down and sideways and jumping over roots and rocks. They also probably trip a lot more often and pick themselves up and start again. Or maybe that's just my experience with trail running. But here's the thing about running economy. Running economy, it's been shown in previous studies, does not translate from the road to the trail. So no matter how economical you run on the road, that doesn't mean you are going to run as an economical runner on the trails. It's just too different, apples and oranges. So of course the researchers wanted to test this and they found that when they pitted the trail runners against the road runners on a flat treadmill at around seven minute mile, the road runners burned 6% less energy than the trail runners at that flat level. However, the differences were seen when we raised the incline of the treadmill to 10% and we kept that pace at about a seven minute mile. When the incline of the treadmill was raised to 10%, researchers found that there was really no difference in the running economy between the road runners and the trail runners. Now, while you might be disappointed at hearing there was no difference between the two, consider this. The road runners were 6% more efficient than the trail runners when they were flat. However, that increased efficiency had completely disappeared when we raised the incline to 10%. Now, logic dictates that if we raise the incline even more, the road runners may fall back, whereas the trail runners may get more efficient. And this is probably to be expected as they have more experience in differing terrains and at least going uphill. Researchers also looked at all the other biomechanical data, cadence, ground contact time, leg stiffness, you know, all that stuff that your watch tracks but we never really look at. And they found that there was no difference between road runners and trail runners. But this is good. We want to limit the amount of differences so we can actually find out where the differences are. So there's a couple of schools of thought. Perhaps that trail runners have adapted to running on trails and road runners have adapted to running on roads, right? That's kind of an evolutionary theory. But there's also the thought that because trail running is remarkably smaller than road running and I'm talking about the entire industry and because it is so much smaller it doesn't attract the top level talent because there is less money in trail running. Now I know you're going to tell me Matt but look at some of these trail runners out there they are world-class athletes and I would agree but Perhaps there are more. Perhaps there are a lot more Kylian Journeys out there that have stepped forward into the mountain running scene because there isn't enough money to bring them in. Who knows? Okay, but get this. This is a pretty interesting stat. The road runners in the study, so the French national team of road running, they reported training for about 79 hours a month. So what's that? About 2.6 hours a day. The trail running team, which remember are world class, they won the team world championship in 2019. They reported running for an average of 43.6 hours a month. 
that's about 1.4 hours a day. That is a pretty big difference. And it does raise the question that if the trail runners were to train as much as the road runners train, perhaps they would get stronger, perhaps they would get more efficient. And on the other side of that coin, one could also argue that if the road runners trained less, which would result in less fatigue, perhaps they're training so much that they are inhibiting muscle growth, perhaps if they trained a little less, they could also be stronger. We just don't know from this study. It was also found that the road runners actually do more strength work than the trail runners. So perhaps the road runners know that they are inhibiting muscle growth by running so much, so they're compensating by doing more strength work. Who knows? Look, we also can't overlook the question that perhaps trail runners are just a little more chill. They're just a little more laid back about their sport and they know that, hey, I can reach world-class level by only training for 1.4 hours a day. When I think about it from that perspective, trail running seems like a pretty good gig. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you are primarily a road runner or primarily a trail runner. I know that for me, I am obviously a road runner. You know that. If you follow me on Strava, you know that all my runs are on roads, but I think that is because of geological constraints and that if I lived in the woods, if I lived in the mountains, I would do a lot more trail running, mountain running, that kind of thing. But maybe that's the way it is for everyone. We bloom where we're planted. Anyway, I had a pretty good week of running. It's been a couple of weeks now since my marathon and I'm actually starting to feel pretty good. Well, hold on, because the whole week didn't actually go like that. I felt pretty good towards the end of the week, but at the beginning of the week, I woke up on Monday and I had this horrible pain right here in my hip. Now, it kind of felt like it was inside and it was a dull pain, almost like a muscular pain, but it also felt similar to how a stress, a stress fracture feels. If you ever know that feeling, it's kind of like a dull pain. Then when you kind of manipulate it, you can find where the fracture is. And I couldn't find where the fracture was. I kept digging around, but it hurt just to walk. All day, it hurt just to walk. Now, I have to tell you something that I did that was pretty stupid. Monday morning, I still went out for a run because there was only about half an hour between when I woke up and I felt that pain and I was having trouble walking and I still went out for the run. I knocked out 7.2 miles, very easy. My gosh, very easy. And then for the rest of the day, I felt that same pain. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have a stress fracture. I have just thrown my Boston plans out the window. I didn't feel anything coming on. I just woke up with it. I brought my massage gun to work and I spent all day just like massaging that muscle or whatever it was in there, hoping it was muscular. I took some Aleve. I woke up on Tuesday morning and it was still, still bad still bad spent another day massaging it just resting it staying off my feet and i woke up on wednesday and it was totally gone and i actually felt pretty good so that was surprising a very happy surprise so on wednesday i decided to do the workout that i had planned on tuesday so on wednesday i knocked out 9.2 miles total warmed up for two miles then i did eight eight hundreds with 400 meters recovery in between then i cooled down for one point two miles i think it was so pretty good and i thought maybe that pain will come back after doing a pretty hard workout 800s can be pretty taxing but it didn't thursday i decided to do something again probably in hindsight it was pretty stupid but it's only stupid if something negative comes from it but i did decide to do my thursday workout that i already had planned on thursday even though i did a workout the day before on wednesday so oh my gosh i know you guys are rolling your eyes at me thursday i knocked out 9.4 miles again i did two miles to warm up then i did a 10k at tempo pace probably a little faster than tempo pace but it was super warm that day so you know it was it was okay i, I still felt pretty good at the end of that workout then i cooled down for 1.2 miles and again feeling pretty good guys let me not just beat around the bush the pain went away it, it felt bad the beginning of the week two days later it was totally gone and yeah, pretty relieved as you can imagine. Okay, something I haven't talked about up until now is how tired I'm feeling from that last marathon I did. And I know I really didn't give myself enough time to recover. I only took two days completely off and then I've been keeping it a bit easier even though I did do two workouts back to back. So immediately contradicting myself. But towards the end of the week, I did start noticing that I'm just feeling a little tired. And this feeling I realized has been going on since the marathon. I had some pretty bad runs towards the end of the week. And I say bad runs, I still knocked them out, but things just weren't feeling good. And guys, because I did those two workouts in the middle of the week, the rest of the week was easy. On Friday, I knocked out 7.4 miles, very easy. I don't know, easy runs are sometimes not so easy, at least the heart rate's low, but they don't feel easy. You know what I'm saying? Same thing happened on Saturday. Now, because I worked all week, Saturday was my long run of the week and I only knocked out 12.2 miles. Now, I did have to leave the house around, I don't know what it was, 3.20, maybe 3.15, so it was pretty early. So that could have contributed to me feeling a little tired, 
not feeling warmed up, but 12.2 miles was just a slog. And I did take it to the trails and I did some night trail running, so that part was fun. But I also got lost. All of a sudden I was running across a meadow and the fog just came in out of nowhere and I just didn't know which way I was heading. So I pulled out my phone and I just saw which way the road was that I was heading towards and I just kept heading that way. And then I found the trail that got me back from the meadow back onto the trails and all was good. I mean, I say lost, I was probably only confused for less than a minute, but it was a strange feeling because I run there all the time. Anyway, that was a total ramble. Sunday, I did wrap up my week with seven miles easy. I started feeling a little better towards the end of the week, but again, I did notice my fatigue. And I tell you, these thoughts, they creep into your head. And I started thinking, have I ruined Boston? By doing the Tallahassee Marathon, have I ruined myself for Boston? And you might be thinking, well, Matt, just take some extra time off. But now I'm in that tricky time frame, that tricky time frame where the Boston Marathon is quickly approaching. I'm in the peak training time. I have to start doing some longer runs. I have to start nailing these workouts. And I don't know. Anyway, that's just kind of like my mind dump of all my anxieties and thoughts that go through my head, the doubts. You know, you know how it is. Well, if you do know how it is, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I guess the week wasn't a total loss. I actually ran 52.53 miles, which is about, oh, I don't know, 84.59 kilometers. So, you know, pretty good week. I knew this was going to be a lower week than what I normally run just because I didn't have a day off. So I didn't have that extra time in the morning to go out for a longer effort, but not too shabby. Not too shabby, eh? Anyway, look, if you have made it to this point in the video, first of all, thank you. That was, uh, I was rambling a bit there. So if you have made it to this point, why don't you put the rabbit emoji in the comments, just so I know that you made it to this point. And really it's because I've been running my mouth like a rabbit. It's like, is that even a saying? I don't know. But the rabbit emoji is gonna work either way. No, I don't care what it means. Anyway, be kind, be happy, run well. I will see you in a couple of days.